Hey, BookTube and YouTube people. This is Michael Romeo, and I talk about books. Well, usually I do. That's my channel's name, anyway. But this session's a little bit different. I have passed 500 subscribers, and that was a big goal for me. And I want to thank publicly my sus subscribers, which is now up to 517 last time I looked. And I also want to welcome folks who are casual viewers who do so without subscribing. I think it'd be great if you did subscribe, but I'm glad you're here either way. And um, when I passed my goal of 500, I uh, watched it for a day or so to make sure that it wasn't going to drop back with an out strange quirk in an algorithm that sometimes happens. Um, and it didn't. So I put on my community tab that to celebrate, we're going to have a question and answer session. Um, you all posed questions. I gave, I went through um, midnight last night, allowing people to pose questions, whatever they wanted to ask about. And we had some brave people who stepped up and <laughs> finding out how brave I am in answering them. And, um, well, let's get started with the answers, y'all. And, uh, oh yeah, we started out, and one, one of the questions I posed was, Toby, Toby really wants to be in the show here. Oh, yeah, there we go. I can breathe. Um, where was I? Yes, I had put in there, I, I ended with, P.S., who's going to bring the pizza? Well, I never did say to people what kind of pizza I wanted. So two people asked what kind of pizza I like. And they are, let me find them here. I want to address this right out of the gate. <laughs> Favorite pizza. Born again reader? Reader? Reader. See, see my, uh, my Yankee comes out every now and again unexpectedly. Even though I've lived here in the South now for 30 some years. Um, but <laughs> once you've been in New England, you know, it's hard, it's hard for it to go away. Born Again Reader and Bandana Book Mom both asked about my favorite pizza. And it's a pizza that I used to get at a restaurant called Bertucci's, which is a chain, a chain or a franchise, I'm not sure. But either way, there's more than one. And um, since I moved down here, there just aren't any close enough to, to go to uh, on any kind of basis. Um, but they had a pizza on their menu when I lived up north called the Sporky. And I don't know if other places have this on their menus, but I've never seen it before. But I have found a couple of places that will make it upon request. And, um, the Sporky is a regular crust with regular sauce and cheese, sun-dried tomatoes, Ricotta cheese and dollops around the pizza. And ground Italian sausage. That's a Sparky. And it is amazing. And for those you two that asked me about what kind of pizza I liked and what kind of pizza I wanted, a Sparky. So, I was going to say get to work, but then you won't be able to listen to the answers. Well, yes, you could because you watch this in your own time anyway. Uh, anyway, Sparky is my favorite pizza. Kim at Middle of the Book March asked other, what other activities or hobbies I love as much as reading. And um, I'm not a very adventurous person. I am a homebody, an introvert mostly. And I love what I call fiber arts. And that is knitting, crocheting, cross stitch. Uh, I, I just, I have a blast doing this stuff. It's, it's very relaxing for me, and uh, I love that I create something that's usable or something, sometimes just something that's good to look at. Huh? Um, I also enjoy coloring. I never lost the joy of coloring from when I was a kid, and thank God somebody has latched onto that adults like to color because there's a whole adult coloring industry now with adult coloring books and adult pens and coloring pens, coloring pencils, just, and it's a blast. And I love sometimes just putting on some soft music and my wife and I sitting side by side, listening to the soft music 
and coloring away and at the end going oh look what I did and she goes oh look what I did and I take pictures of them and I post them on Facebook and that's coloring I also have a rather odd little hobby um, Spotify even pointed it out Spotify now that's a big company Spotify um, they do at the end of every year they do a uh, wrap-up of your year and um, well one of the things they pointed out in my wrap-up was that in the entire Spotify Spotify verse Spotify universe galaxy whatever um, that I of everybody involved in Spotify have the most playlists I only, I, it's only over 200 um, I love making playlists and this goes back to even before there was things like Spotify I would buy blank cassettes and I would just make playlists basically on the cassettes of songs I liked to hear in certain combinations and I would give them as gifts and um, I gave one to my sister once that made her cry because she was some of the stuff that was on it was just so rare and unexpected and from her past that um, she was just thrilled and I I hope she remembers that <laughs> because it was fun making it and anyway I still make playlists I've got over 200 playlists on Spotify it's a blast and uh, I'm never at a loss with something to to listen to so Kim those are the things I like to do besides read uh, then we got Alan big hard books and he wants to know when I'm going to appear on Alan and Greg's Monday Night Live show and it's very easy as soon as I'm given a date I'll be there just let me know and then he also asked what is the very first thing I remember reading and this is kind of a two-part answer um, I remember learning to read in first grade from the Dick and Jane books. Remember those? C. Dick, C. Jane, C. C. Spot, C. Spot Run, C. Jane Run, C. Dick Trip Up Jane, C. Spot Bite Dick. Uh, just, you know, how those books go. Um, but that wasn't really my first reading experience that was learning how to read and I found it fun it was enjoyable but the first real reading experience Greg I mean Alan sorry Alan you said Greg in your question um, was when I read by myself without any help whatsoever from anybody a book called the Riddle Kingdom by Rose Weiler and I'll put up a little picture of it here um, cute story I still have a copy of it my wife actually found a copy of it one year for Christmas and got me a replacement copy because I no longer had the one from when I was a child about a young boy named Abel and um, he wants to marry the princess of the kingdom and in order to win the princess's hand the king presents with him a list of riddles that he must solve and I'm not going to tell you the ending because that would be a spoiler. Read it yourself. And then we've got Literary Love 6324. Literary Love would like to know what book would I recommend to anyone? And that is easy. Um, I know there are books that I enjoy, like The Great Gatsby, but that's just not for everyone because it's just the type of book it is but one book that I read and I've read it several times and I swear anybody who reads this book will enjoy it everybody I've ever lent it to or who has taken my suggestion to read it has loved it it is one of those books you can't help but love and it is Trinity by Leon Uris and again I'll put up a picture um, amazing book I've even used it in some of my 
um, content. Um, recently, when was this? Oh, I don't know, about November maybe. Um, we were doing, um, some of us were do doing this, having some fun with reading, um, oh, I can't even think of what they were called now. But something that's really, really exciting and really wonderful. Well, I read the first five or six pages of Trinity. And a number of people said that they were getting this book. And I don't know if they ever did. I don't know if they've ever read it. Um, but the last time I talked about it, other people said the same thing. And as a matter of fact, I think Kim, middle of the book march, was one of the people who said she was going to get this book. And I hope she has. And um, it's just, it's a wonderful book. It is a wonderful book. It is set in Ireland. Uh, starts at the potato famine. And takes you on the way, all the way through to the beginning of the Irish Revolution. And the characters are so real. So likable in most cases. And when they're not likable, they're really hateable for a reason. And you've got just these storylines weaving through it that you, you can't wait to find out what's going to happen next to these characters and how they're going to handle it and um, who's going to fall in love and who's not and who's going to join the re rebel forces and and just all, all kinds of stuff in these this book. And it's a chunker, folks. No kidding, it's a chunker. But you will read it like that because it is so good. Trinity by Leon Yaris. I've read it at least four, if not five or six times. Um, and I recommend it to anybody who wants to know something good to read. Trinity by Leon Yaris. Now, Literary Love also asked, what is the most inspiring nonfiction book I've read? And that would be The Cloister Walk by Kathleen Norris. Beautiful book. Absolutely beautiful book. Recommended to me by a friend. Um... And uh, on, on her recommendation, I bought it and, and read it and loved it. And I have recommended it to other people since. Uh, I know other people who have read it and loved it here on BookTube. And it is about, it's, it's Kathleen Norris. And uh, she's a poet from the Midwest of the United States. And she takes on two nine-month residencies at a, at a Benedictine monastery. That means two times in her life for nine months, she lived at a Benedict, ben, Benedictine monastery. And the book is her essays written during and or about that time. And it is a beautiful, inspiring book. Um, just about self-discovery and uh, finding peace with yourself, with the world around you. And just, it, it's gorgeous. And even though she's a poet, it's written in prose. So you don't have, if you don't like poetry, you don't have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, The Cloister Walk by, by Kathleen Norris. If you haven't read it, really grab a hold of this book and read it. Don't race through it. Read it nice and slow. Absorb what she's saying because it is, it's just, it's beautiful. And Literary Love asked a third question. What is my favorite meal or snack? And without a pause, I can say it is Coquille Saint-Jacques. It's a scallop recipe, French scallop recipe, in case you couldn't tell from the title. Um, it, in a creamy cheese sauce that is just baked in the casserole with the scallops and the cheese sauce and oh my good gravy it is so good so good i love it and I, I try to have it for my birthday as often as i possibly can tonight i'm drinking mocha um just a teaspoon of instant coffee teaspoon of Cadbury drinking chocolate 
Well, you can use Nestle's Quick or anything else like that. Just add a little bit of cream and add the hot water and stir it up. And it's a delicious hot drink, hot mocha. Okay, so moving on. No edit book reviews. Asked, do I like nonfiction books? I do. Um, I don't like them across the board. Well, I don't like fiction across the board either. Um, but I do find I am a little pickier with nonfiction books. I want my nonfiction books to read like a story. Um, that doesn't mean I want it to be historical fiction, which is something totally different. Uh, I just want the narrative to be exciting. I want the narrative to be gripping. Um, I don't want it to be dry as dust nonfiction that, you know, uh, that just states, states and facts and then move, moves on. Uh, Cloister Walk by Kathleen Norris that I just talked about is an example of a nonfiction book that I loved. Um, Under the Tuscan Sun and Bella Tuscany by Francis Mays. Wonderful books. A Year in Provence by Peter Mayle. Uh, Galileo's Daughter by Dava Sobel. And as well as Longitude by Dava Sobel. Both very good books. These are books that read with the immediacy of good fiction. And they are nonfiction to the core. To the core. And um, another one's John Adams by uh, David McCullough. Uh, wonderful book. Chunker. Chunker alert. Uh, so yes, I do like nonfiction. It's just I like a spe specific style of nonfiction. So there's that one. Bookstalgic. How you doing? Um, got three questions here. My favorite genre or genres that I like to read. I have two that I consider my favorites. Uh, one is historical fiction, which I just kind of, you know, but historical fiction. Um, Trinity, which I just recommended, is historical fiction. Um, I'm reading a mystery series with my wife. Um, it's the Ian Rutledge mystery series by Charles Todd that counts as historical fiction. And it also counts as crime fiction, which is my second favorite genre. And when I can combine the two, historical fiction and crime fiction, just, just sit me in a chair and keep the coffee coming or the tea. Either one. I don't care. I'm just reading. So. Uh, that would be historical fiction and crime fiction are my favorites. Although I do read basically any genre. Um, is there any genre I don't read? Um, I don't read a lot of romance. I don't read fantasy. Fantasy, I've tried it. The only one I've ever liked is The Lord of the Rings. Um, rest of fantasy, just it goes over my head. I just I don't get it. Uh, so yeah, historical fiction and crime fiction, my two favorites. Uh, she also wanted to know, favorite place that I've ever traveled, my favorite place to travel to. I do not want to live there. I wouldn't live there if I was paid. Oh, well, maybe if I was paid. Um, is New York City. I love New York City. I love going to Broadway plays. I love going to the restaurants. I love going dancing. I love just, uh, I love New York City. It, it, it is a wonderful place to have a vacation. Um, shopping. Oh my gosh. Shopping in New York City. I can go broke in a second. Um, New York City. That's my favorite place to travel. Um, oh, tail. When I lived up near Boston, my wife and I, who wasn't my wife at the time, uh, she was just my roommate at the time. Yeah, we met as roommates. And uh, that's a whole other story. Nobody's asked about that story. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, we decided we were out with another friend. The three of us were out in Providence, Rhode Island. Going to sh kind of just a shopping, browsing, having fun kind of day. And it was getting close to dinner time. And 
want, trying to decide what we want. And I, I just said, you know what I would really love right now? I would really love to go to the Stony Walk. And Linda said, oh, that would be amazing, the Stony Walk. And the lady that was with us, Diane, said, well, what is it and where is it? And we said, what it is, is a wonderful Asian restaurant. And it's in Flushing, New York, which is Flushing is part of New York City. And long story short, I notice when people say that, it's usually too late anyway. Uh, but long story short, we basically kidnapped our friend, drove from Providence, Rhode Island to New York City, called a couple of friends on the way and had them meet us. And we went and ate at the Stony Walk. And then we went from there to um, some bar that my friends knew about that was nice and reputable and fun place. And we had ourselves some drinks and then we piled back in the car at I don't know, about three o'clock in the morning and drove back. And this, and this time driving back to Boston because that's where you know, we were visiting Providence. But anyway, tale of New York. And Bookstalchik also wants to know, how many pets do I have? I have five Yorkshire Terriers. One of them is right here on my lap. She's my little baby. A little baby Tetley. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I do this all, all the time, don't I? I show you off every chance I get. And Toby was here. Toby's now on the chair over here. And then there's uh, Toffee the Princess. Trappist is on the floor, just over there, and over here is Tardis. And um, those are them. Those are my my um, five Yorkies. Plus, I have five cats. Who? There's one. There's one right over there. There's Barnaby. Um, I think Oscar's over here, on, on, curled up on the chair amongst all the pillows on it. And then there's also um, Abigail, and Isabeau, and Mr. Fitzwilliam Darcy. And Mr. Fitzwilliam Darcy used to have a companion cat by the name of Miss Elizabeth Bennet. But Miss Elizabeth Bennet recently passed away. Uh, like around November, I think it was. Um, yeah, she left us. So Mr. Darcy's now a widower. Um, but yeah, five Yorkies and five cats. Yeah. And then we've got Nuance 88. Hi, Nuance. Um, couple of questions here. We've got three questions. What are your favorite book-related memories? My favorite book-related memories are going to the library with my mother. Oh, hey there. Oh, here's the princess. Here's Toffee the princess. Right there. Ah, I'm the princess. Ah. Um, going to the library with my mother. When I started learning how to read in school, my mother started taking me along with her to the library every other week. It was because, you know, you rented books for two weeks. Rented, borrowed books for two weeks. And um, I was allowed to go and pick two or three books. And I, I, was, I went with her joyfully. Every time she was going, I was ready to go. And um, I grew up going to the library with my mother um, well into my teen years. And uh, it was a great experience. Uh, she somewhat guided my reading. Although she wasn't too, um, too controlling over what I read. Um, she mostly let me read what I wanted to read as long as it wasn't too really off the wall and uh yeah so going to the library with my mother and next question is do you think you've changed as a reader over the years i have i have changed as a reader over the years uh, i used to read a lot of horror and i used to read for quick entertainment quick light entertainment um i used to race through books i i could read a book in a day without batting an eye um, and as I've gotten older, I've slowed down in my reading. I take the time more to appreciate the writing and the author's talent, 
the story, and I just I I, be, I become a slower reader. Um, and rather than looking for quick entertainment, which I still enjoy from time to time, I haven't completely abandoned it. Uh, but I've grown to enjoy books with more depth and detail, um, which usually means I like a chunker. Uh, so that's the type of books that tend to have those. Um, yeah, I like I like depth and detailed writing, and um, quick entertainment when I need something just to clear the palate, so to speak. And then we're asked, what are the aspects of literature that you cherish and love the most? Or look forward to the most? I'm sorry, look forward to, I can't even read my own handwriting. Look forward to the most. Uh, again, depth and detailed writing. I look forward to that now. Good character development. I, I, I can't stand paper-thin characters anymore. I love a good, solid character that has been developed with multi-layers and lots of pre-story and etc. And basically, I want books that transport me, that take me away, um, that lift me out of the here and now and put me in another place with other people and just carry me along. That That's what I love in a good book. Um, yeah, let's see, we're up to 26 minutes, and I predicted we were going to go to 40, I think I'm going to pop that up to 50. Um, sorry, I know long, long videos are not always, um, not, not always popular, but these are great questions, and I'm glad they were asked. Patricia Mahoney asked, well, she mentioned that I do Poetry Thursday. I had I'd given it up for a little while, but I'm back on it now. And she wants to know who my favorite poets are. And this was an easy one for me. Um, N.P. Hunt is at the top of my list. Uh, it's somebody actually that I met here on BookTube. And um, I love his poetry. He uh, writes from a viewpoint that I understand and... Um, I can empathize with because I've been there. I am there. Um, basically, his poetry deals with um, living with mental illness, which, you know, in this case is anxiety, depression. Um, and that's something that I have dealt with for a while, and uh, as well as being bipolar and having attention deficit disorder. Just a few things. But Nathan's poetry is is it speaks about these issues in a way I wish I could uh, he puts it into words paints pictures and um, he is definitely worth reading uh, without a doubt I also like Edgar Allan Poe I like his poetry more than I do his short stories although I do enjoy the short stories too um, but Edgar Allan Poe's poetry is, is for the most part, stunning. Just absolutely wonderful. And my favorite poem of all was written by Alfred Lord Tennyson. And that is Ring Out Wild Bells. So that alone puts Tennyson on my list of favorites just because he wrote that one poem. Uh, which is wonderful. And if you don't know it, go back to middle of December when I was doing Vlogmas. Um, one of my Vlogmas readings was Ring Out Wild Bells. MJ, a reading this life, has posed two questions. She wants to know what my life was pre and what it is post Lady Gaga. Obviously, there's a story here, folks, right? Um, it was a while back. MJ was going to an, to a Lady Gaga Lady Gaga concert, and I forget where she posted it. It might have been on Discord or something. She posted that she was going to this concert, and I thought Lady Gaga. 
I didn't know a lot about Lady Gaga. I'd seen a couple things on TV, um, mostly in the news or in gossip column type stuff. And I thought, isn't Lady Gaga like, doesn't she attract a teenage crowd? And um, not trying to cast aspersions on your age, MJ, which I'm not at all. I'm, I mean, I've got many years on you already. Um, but it just struck me that somebody as together and mature and as classy as MJ was going to go to a Lady Gaga concert. So I got curious, and I said, what is it about Lady Gaga? Uh, edu educate me here. What If I wanted to listen to Lady Gaga, where would I start? And she said, start with a song called Teeth. And I did. And then I went on to Speechless, and I went on to another song, and then another song, and then another song, and overnight, I became obsessed with Lady Gaga and it's now been it's now been a year and a half a year and a half and I am still like I discovered Lady Gaga yesterday I just am so over the moon about Lady Gaga um, prior to Lady Gaga I had I was always searching music I was searching music for anything great to listen to um, something that would speak to me, something that would draw me in, or would draw, or would, would absorb into me, or w something that deep. And um, along the way, I found a lot of great artists, a lot of great music. But when I would dr drill down on it, it just it would fizzle out. Um, still, I've got I've got two hundred plus playlists on Spotify, which I've said right. Um, so I do, I do know a lot of music, but there was just something that wasn't in here. There, there was a space somewhere in here that the music I was listen, listening to wasn't filling. And then I found Lady Gaga, thanks to MJ. And that space is filled. She is that music I had been searching for. All my life. Forever. Um, I find her music engaging. I find it exciting. I find it touching. I find it so many, so many levels to it. And as long as I listen to it, as much as I listen to it over the past year and a half, it just has not grown old. It hasn't aged at all. It's just like I've just discovered it. It's, I get ex as excited when certain songs come on, as I did the first time I heard them, and went, oh, this is a great song. Um, now, that's the long story. That was me pre-Lady Gaga and post-Lady Gaga. I'm just like, you know, that space is filled. I'm, I'm, I'm all set. I don't need to go hunting for new music. Now, my wife has another tale, another way of answering this. She says, pre-Lady Gaga, I was sane. Post Lady Gaga, it's the answer to every question. Take that for what it's worth. Um, MJ also wanted to know what is a white whale book that I have yet to conquer. The one on the t I have several white whale books. Uh, I did a thing on white whale books last year and uh, was doing a white whale reading project. Don't try to say white whale reading project too fast. It won't come out right. Um, that just kind of fell through the cracks last year. Uh, but at the top of my white whales is War and Peace. I started it one time when I was in my 20s. Got about a third of the way through it and just I lost momentum. Um, I keep meaning to go back because up until that point, I had been loving it. And then it, it was like when I hit the war part, all of a sudden there was just more detail than I wanted to know. Remember, I read, as I said earlier, I read for entertainment back then, not for detail and depth. Well, I've changed. We know that. 
So there's a very good chance that I can get past that point now because I'll actually enjoy that point. Um, so yeah, so War and Peace. And it's going to get read probably in 2025 because I have a reading event that I'm going to curate, which I am not going to say any more about yet because I don't want to get old before it gets here. But around November, be watching and listening. I've got a reading event. That I'm going to curate in 2025. Be ready for it. So I'm going to expect a lot of you to read along. Okay? Thank you, MJ. Um, there's the pizza questions. Oh, did I burn two pages here? I did. Okay. Then we've got Jess Book Girl TV. Jess Book Girl TV has asked two questions. Um, first one, who got me into reading? Well, other than my first grade teacher who taught the Dick and Jane books, um, it was my mother. Because as I said a little while ago, she hauled me off to the library from the start and just watered that seed until it grew on its own. Um, and another one that helped to get me heavily into reading was the Scholastic Book Club. Um, they got a lot of my mother's money. Um, then she wants to know what kind of music I am into. <laughs> Lady Gaga. Um, uh, I like, I like pretty much everything with the exception of rap. Um, there are even one or one or two numbers here and there. Maybe more than one or two rap numbers that I like, but more because I like the artist than I do the rapping. Uh, one is Queen Latifah. I really enjoy Queen Latifah. And even her rap stuff I find entertaining. Um, but, yeah, as far as my favorites go, um, obviously Lady Gaga, Barbara Streisand, Mary Chapin Carpenter, Joan Armatrading. Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett, James Taylor. When it comes to classical, I like Beethoven. I like Mendelssohn. And Shostakovich wrote my all-time favorite classical piece, which is the second movement of his second piano concerto. And the best recording of it is with his two sons, one of them conducting and the other one playing the piano. And you can find that on Spotify. And I've got it in a playlist. And then, this is the one that I knew was going to take up some time. For about 38 minutes. Yeah, 50 minutes is coming. Um... Um, it's from, oh, I know what I was I'm supposed to have my tablet here to read her questions because they, they were kind of long worded. Um, well, I'm going to have to just, just swing it because I didn't bring my tablet. Um, actually I can go get it. Um, sit tight. I'm going to be right back. Okay, so I'm back. And actually, that won't work, getting my tablet, because I just discovered that my tablet does not allow you to see the community tab, which is where her questions were posted. So I'm going to have to just kind of give you the Reader's Digest versions of her questions. Um, she wanted to know... Um, what kind of art I like, what kind of art I collect, what kind of art I'm into, and, um, basically I collect paintings, there's paintings all around, and you can't see them because the camera's in the wrong direction, um, and I especially love religious art, um, not that I am over-the-top religious, I just like religious art, um. I do have a spiritual life, but 
my the art that you see in my living room would indicate that I have a stronger spiritual life than what I actually do. Um, I also like um, um, Richard Estes. I love his work. And um, I, I like to collect pottery. I love going to the local. I live in a artist rich area. And I love going to the studios and shopping for pottery, cups, plates, and you name it. I've got refrigerator magnets that I bought from pottery artists. Um, I just I just love um, pottery, and I've developed with my purchases what I do purchase. I developed kind of my own uh, palette that I enjoy. So it's what I look for now when I go out. Um, I also like some pen and ink drawings. I've got a couple of those. One my wife brought into the relationship from a friend of hers. Um, and I have bought one that that is a good companion piece to it. And I've also got a painting that com that now matches, it's a, creates a trilogy. Um, and I, as I said before, I do fiber art. Uh, what I call fiber arts, knitting, crocheting, cross stitch, and I love the results of that, especially from people who are far more talented than I am. And um, what is my favorite piece? My favorite piece is a painting that I still haven't got up on the wall because I have not yet found a frame that I like on it. And same with my wife, I mean, we're trying to do this together find a frame that's not put on that we both like but it is an original bespoke piece by the New York artist Robert Sebastiano who just so happens to be a dear friend of ours um, and I'll tell you what it's a lot of fun having a famed New York artist as your friend um, when we stole our friend and went to New York and called friends ahead of time Robert Sebastiano was one of the the friends that met us and had dinner with us and and uh, went drinking afterwards and sent us home in our car afterwards. Um, I'm going to put a link to his website down below. There's also a link on my Discord to his website. Uh, this particular painting, though, that he did, one of the trips my wife and I made to New York to visit them they took us to a place called the Cloisters, which is a museum that is built out of pieces of European monasteries and convents that were basically damaged during the wars, the world wars. But parts of it, you know, the parts that held together, they transported them to New York City to a place called, I think it's Washington Heights, if I'm not mistaken. And um, it's one of the most amazing museums I've ever been to. We loved it. We loved it. We loved it. We loved it. Well, I asked him to bring back the memory of that trip in a painting. And he did a painting of one of the areas of the cloisters that just absolutely, I mean, I look at it and I'm right back there right back there enjoying the beautiful day with the beautiful friends and um, it's a very special piece we asked him to do it for our anniversary a couple of years ago and uh, it's 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 special it's special and then Elan also wanted to know what my favorite cuisines are and um, I like Korean very big on Korean, love Thai, and I like English cuisine. And I know there's a lot of people joke about the English don't know how to cook. Well, that's a lot of malarkey. Um, uh, granted, most of their food is brown, but it's still good. It's it's very good. I love having a Yorkshire pudding with my roast beef. I love fish and chips. I love. Um, uh, um, um, Kranikin. I love just so many English dishes that, um, 
and I also hesitate to say this out loud, but I enjoy Spotted Dick. Um, my friends in the UK just got a chuckle, I think. Um, now she wants to know about my, um, my pets. She knows me, she knows I have five Yorkies, and... She wants to know how many Yorkies I've had over the years and what other pets I've had over the years. Well, over the years, I've had a total of 10 Yorkies. My wife and I together have had a total of 10 Yorkies. And um, we got the five current ones. And then the first one was Tristan, who was a booger boy if ever there was one. And, um, we have Tuppence, and Treacle, and Topaz, and Trinket. And you heard me say the names of the ones we currently have. Yes, they all begin with T and have two syllables. And that's in honor of our first one, Tristan. Because he was such a special dog. Um, that everyone that's come along since has had to have a name based on his name. Beginning with T, with two syllables. Uh, currently have five cats. Um, my wife and I have had nine total over the years. Um, probably couldn't do their names as quickly as I can the Yorkies. We've had fish. We've had peach-faced lovebirds. We've had a Latino parakeet that mimicked the cat, one of the cats meowing. Um, no. Yeah, yeah, limit the cat meowing, and it would also call the cat, because when it was dinner time, we'd always call Feebles. Well, every now and again, all of a sudden, out of the birdcage, you'd hear Feebles. Anyway, um, we had cockatiels that we adopted that, uh, from an old man that was going into a nursing home and couldn't take them with him. Uh, and we had hamsters. We had two boy hamsters who happened to have more hamsters? Maybe they adopted. I don't know. Um, and then she wanted to know how long my wife and I have been together and my secret for my three secrets for a happy marriage. I've been with my wife for 38 years. We haven't been married that long, but we've been a couple for 38 years. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we met as roommates. Um, she had an apartment that her roommate had moved down and she needed help with the expenses. I had just gotten a job up in her area uh, and didn't want to commute and I couldn't afford an apartment on my own. So there was this place called Roommates Incorporated that advertised in the Boston Globe. And she advertised with them that she had the apartment. I went to them and said, I need a place to live. And they matched us up based on our likes and dislikes and et cetera, et cetera. And now 38 years later, we're married with five Yorkshire Terriers and five cats. Um, and if I had to give three Three things for a good marriage. One, number one, forget what the counselors and the marriage specialists and all say about marrying your friend. I married my best friend and it has been the best move I ever made. Uh, so many of them say, don't marry a friend, don't marry a friend. The, the relationship is totally different than just a friendship. And yeah, but it grows. It grows into something else. Marry a best friend. Um, and uh, number two, commit unequivocally. Just commit. We made the commitment when we got married that this was forever. 
and we have had times where it got rocky. But we made that commitment at the beginning that whatever the problem was, we would work through it. And we have. We've worked through every problem, and we continue to work through whatever crops up. And um, it's just it's that commitment that there is no out clause. Plain and simple. There is no out clause. And three, respect. Respect your partner. Respect what they what they mean, what they stand for, what they love, what they don't love. Just respect them for being who they are, period. And that's it. That's my three. And then she said, tell us something about yourself. I forget exactly how it was worded, but tell us something about yourself that nobody's asked that the rest of the people probably don't know. Well, I thought about that for a while, went through a number of things, and finally came up with that at one time, my dream was to be a best-selling writer. And I have actually written four novels. I've written a number of short stories, uh, one of which was published in a Canadian publication called Dreams and Visions back in the 19... Was that was that the late 80s or early 90s that that happened? And um, I've published, not published, but posted one of my short stories on here, on BookTube, uh, around Halloween. So if you missed that and you're interested in it, you can go back and right before Halloween... Um, you'll see where I posted uh, a short story that I wrote a while back. And it's just a, a scary little story that I put together. And I thought Halloween was a great time to throw it out there. I've also written poetry. Um, some of it I think is good. Some of it I think is trash. Um, on Poetry Thursday, in the past, I've done a couple of my own pieces. Uh, I will probably do a couple of more this year coming up um, on Poetry Thursday um, but what I wrote that's bad is really bad and I won't be reading those because <laughs> when, I, when I got off the mark I got off the mark so that's about all I have to say on those long ones and that's it that was it I, I think I remember now that I specifically saved that one for last because it was going to be the longest um, so that's it. Guys, gals, y'all, 517 subscribers. You all rock. You're my tribe. I'm so glad you folks are here. Folks that are dropping by, even though you don't subscribe, I still love you. I, I look forward to comments in the comment section, uh, whether you subscribe or not. I love having conversations with you all. You know I do, and uh, this video has gone on a long time, so we're going to just wrap it up here, and uh, again, I thank you all so much. Uh, you've made my time on BookTube an exciting time, and um, we're just moving forward and going to get even more exciting. So, love you all. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.